Have you been looking for a premium car care brand that'll tackle every inch of detail in your car? Pinnacle Natural Brilliance offers a complete line of high performance products that'll detail the inside, the outside, and every square inch. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do it yourself. I'm gonna make it fast, I'm gonna make it fun, I'm gonna keep it easy. In the beginning of this video, you saw two Corvettes. This black Corvette, I'm gonna to use to showcase all the Pinnacle paint care products, compounds, polishes, paint cleaners, and a host of different waxes. We're also gonna cover engine detailing, wheels and tires, and doing pesky things like removing the bugs that have hit the front of the car and dried onto the paint. It's gonna be a very encompassing video, but again, I'm gonna make it easy, I'm gonna keep it simple, so not only will you get your car completely detailed, but you're gonna have fun doing it too. For this Corvette, I'm gonna showcase the Pinnacle products for doing interior detailing. Whether you've got a leather interior or a vinyl interior, Pinnacle products excel at interior detailing. I'll also share some tips and techniques for cleaning the glass. No matter what though, I'm gonna keep it fun, I'm gonna make it easy. When it comes to interior detailing, there's some normal things you want to do, like vacuuming, removing any large debris, like uh, fast food wrappers, uh, empty water bottles, things like that. Get all the big stuff out of the car, then vacuum it, and then you can address the specific surfaces in your car. Now, this Corvette has leather interior with vinyl portions on the door panels. So, this will give me the opportunity to show you how to use both leather and vinyl products in the car. Now, normally what I like to do is I like to start at the top of the seat and work my way down. And then if I were to get any kind of overspray, it will fall down and I haven't cleaned that area, so I'll be working that cleaner in at that point. So that's just a little tip to start at the top and then work your way down. Now, when you're working on leather one of the or vinyl, one of the things you gotta keep in remembering is that you have uh, sweat and acids and body oils that come off any place skin on you touches your car. So that's primarily gonna be the seat, the back of the headrest, the armrests, and the center console, plus the steering wheel. These are high wear areas. These are the areas you really wanna focus on on getting clean before you condition them, or I'll show you how to use a one step to clean and condition at the same time. After you clean the seats, then you can start tackling things like the door panel, the dash, the shifter, the shifter boot, things like that that aren't really the high wear areas. They're gonna be a lot less dirty, so it'll be faster to clean. In the Pinnacle line, you have the option of doing a two-step or a one-step. Let me separate what makes them different. With the two-step, you have a dedicated cleaner and a dedicated conditioner and protectant. Now, here's where you'd use those. Say you have a very neglected interior. It's been a while since you've cleaned it, or perhaps you bought the car used and the previous owner didn't do a good job of cleaning the interior. That's where you'd use the dedicated cleaner and do a dedicated cleaning step. And this is gonna be a lot better at cleaning built up you know, body and sweat oils on the high wear areas. After you've cleaned those areas, then you could come back with a dedicated conditioner. And not only is this gonna create that soft, supple feel that everybody loves in a leather interior, but it's also gonna bring out that leather scent that everybody loves. Another time you could use the leather conditioner is if you buy a brand new car so it's not dirty, you don't need the cleaner, that's when you could start right away in taking care of that leather by using a dedicated product like the Pinnacle Leather Conditioner. Now, that's a two-step approach, or the twist I added, if you have a new car, just use the conditioner by itself. And here's a, a fast and easy way to do this, and this would be for cars that don't really have a lot of uh, grunge built up on the surfaces. This is a one-step product, so what it's gonna do, it's gonna do three things in one step, and that's what makes doing your interior fast and easy is finding a great one-step product. So it's gonna clean, 
condition and protect. It's going to remove the body oils, the sweats, the dirt that accumulates in your car. It's going to condition to keep things soft and flexible. And it's going to put some UV protection down and also some stain protection down to keep your leather looking pristine when you put the car back into service. Now, this Corvette, the interior is not too bad. So I'm going to show you how to use the One Step product. And I'm a big fan of One Step products because it makes it fast and easy. And that way I can get back to the things I like to do. But if you get to a situation where you've got a grungy interior, you now know the product you need. Or if you've got a new car and all you need is a conditioner, you also know the product you're going to need. When it comes to using any of these products, you always want to start by shaking them really well first. And then the technique I like to show for using a one step is take a clean microfiber towel and instead of applying the product or spraying it right onto the seat, go ahead and dampen your towel with the product. Work this in really well. In fact, you can even take your hand. All these products are completely safe, just like that. And here's another little tip. If you do have some major grunge or dirt film or any kind of uh, uh, marks like you see here that you need to get off, use the product a little wetter, a little heavier. And by doing this, you're actually going to have more cleaners working for you. Okay, so after you spread that around, then just start at the top and work your way down and just massage this product over the surface, you know, work it in really good, and then you can either have a separate microfiber towel to wipe any of the excess off, or you can flip the towel to a clean, dry side, and then wipe off the excess. After you tackle the back of the seat, the front and the back, then move down to the seat face. Tackle it, and a lot of times this will be one of the dirtier areas. So again, reapply some product to a clean side of your towel, Adjust the amount of product you need based upon the dirt level of the seat. And then again, just work it in. Massage it into the leather, over the leather, into the seams, and then flip to a dry side or grab a clean separate towel and wipe the excess off. And cleaning your seats is really that easy. You can do it in one step, restore a brand new look, and leave that seat protected. Here's a tip to make cleaning your steering wheel really easy, really fast, and enable you to do a really good job. And that's to use a microfiber glove. Yeah, that's right. Instead of using a towel, slip a glove onto your hand, apply the product onto the fingers of the glove and into the palm, and then just take and grip that steering wheel and move your hand around it back and forth. And you'll be surprised at just how much grime you're able to pull off. That's the fast way to clean a steering wheel. I've been detailing cars all my life, and I've never met anyone that says they love to clean glass, at least specifically the inside of the windshield. And that's because oftentimes you got to become a contortionist to reach the parts that meet where the dash is. So I said I'd share a couple tips and techniques with you to make it easier and to make it faster, and here they are. First, get a great glass cleaner. The Pinnacle Advanced Glass Cleaner is strong enough to remove both smoker's film and vinyl fog. Now, most of you probably know what smoker's film is. It's an oily film that builds up from anybody that smokes inside their car. But vinyl fog is just as bad. It's an oily film that outgasses off all the plastic on the inside of a car when it's new. And it builds up on the inside of the glass and it becomes a smeary mess. It also creates hay. So in the morning when you're driving to work and the sun's coming up, you have that glare and that's a dangerous situation. Same thing happens at night when you're driving home and the sun's getting low in the sky. It hits that oily film, causes glare, makes it really hard to see. So Pinnacle Advanced Glass Cleaner is strong enough to clean the oily films of smoker film and vinyl fog. At the same time, it's ammonia free, so it's completely safe for tinted windows. The way you want to use this though is, is the technique and the tips that I want to share is it's important to have the proper towels. Now these are lint free microfiber towels and they're specific for glass. They have a very low, uh, they have a very flat weave to them and what that means is they're going to gather up the oily film with the glass cleaner and get it off instead of just moving it around all over the place. And another thing you want to do is you want to make sure you have plenty of towels. For the inside windshield, at least two. One to do the initial wipe and a second one to do a follow-up wipe. 
And here's a cool little tool. This is called the Glassmaster Pro. And as you can see that the way this tilts, it a, has a triangular shaped head with the microfiber bonded on it. And you can use the, the sharper pointy end to get into the corners and of course flip it over and then you can get the front, the part of the windshield that comes down and interfaces with the front of the dash. That place where it's you know really hard to get in there and get with your hand. So a great tool like this makes a great glass cleaner work even better. And here's one more tip. We've all cleaned glass and then come to discover down the road we left some streaks in the glass. So this is a technique that pro detailers use to make sure there's no streaks and if there are to identify if they're on the outside or the inside. On the inside of the windshield when you finish wiping use a top to bottom stroke not a side to side. Save the side to side for the outside and here's why. When you're sitting in the car because you've got the steering wheel there and usually the dash is kind of a complicated area to work around anyway, it's really hard to run your hand back and forth the entire length of the windshield. It's a lot easier to go from one side to the other side changing into the seats and just go up and down. So finish out your last wipe on the inside going up and down and then when you clean the outside go back and forth and when you do see a streak you'll know which side it's on and then you'll know which side you got to get back in there and finish the job. If you put these tips and techniques to use using the specialized tools I shared with you, you'll get perfectly clear streak-free glass with Pinnacle Advanced Glass Cleaner. Exterior detailing. This is the part that guys like me, and I'm sure a lot of you, really like to do. This is kind of the fun part. It's where you take and you make the paint look awesome. You hit all, everything else, the wheels, the tires, the exhaust, and you just make the thing gleam and sparkle when you're driving it around. And uh, I've always really gravitated towards the exterior side, more the interior uh, detailing, just because I, I like my car to look good. And I like everybody to look at it when I'm driving down the road. So I'm gonna share some tips and techniques on how to work smarter instead of harder. Now, that's a cliche people use a lot, but then they never back it up. I'm gonna back it up in this video. So, when I teach detailing classes, one of the things I do is I show people how to not repeat steps. And that's one of the ways you can work smarter instead of harder. And it goes like this. Some of the things you're gonna do on the outside of the car will naturally, because of the process itself, get the car dirty again. For example, cleaning the engine compartment. You'll tend to get overspray onto the glass and onto the sides of the fenders. If you've already washed the car, now you'd have to clean the car a second time. So I like to knock out the things that get the car dirty first and then wash the car. And here's the normal order. First, a very important tip, if you've got dead bugs, like dried on bug splatter, anywhere on the front of the car, even the glass, while you're gathering all your supplies, go ahead and put an insect remover onto a microfiber towel, just spray some on, dab it onto where the insects are and let it go to work softening those dried on bug splatter guts while you're gathering up everything you need. Pulling the hose out, getting your bucket, getting your wash brushes, your wash mitt, all your supplies. And by the time you're ready to go, you can come back and just give it a soft wipe and the bug splatter will be dissolved, softened, and it'll wipe off. And this will help you prevent from scratching the paint. Because a lot of times bug splatter, when it's dried, is kind of abrasive in and of itself. So that's a tip. Get the insect cleaning parts going first. Then, after you've got that done, the thing I like to do is start with the engine compartment. Go ahead and spray your degreaser in, agitate it, clean everything up, rinse it off, close the hood, start the engine, make sure everything's running just fine, and then you can move on to the other areas of the car. So after the insects and the engine, then I tackle things like wheels and tires first. Now, I know a lot of uh, people in the past have always said, start at the top of the car and work your way down. And there, it's kind of relative how you tackle a car, and you can do that if you want to, but here's the problem with that. It, to clean a set of wheels and tires on a car, if you're good at it and the wheels and tires are clean, and I've timed myself, it takes you about 15 minutes for each wheel and tire. That's an hour. If you wash the car 
and then you do the wheels and tires while you're down on the ground doing the wheels and tires the water in your car is drying and it can leave some pretty bad water spots and i'd say in my experience the hardest defect to remove out of a clear coat finish are water spots. Now, you could dry the car and then do the wheels and tires, but then when you rinse the wheels and tires off, you get the car wet, so now you're back to repeating steps. So since how you clean the car is relative, that is, it doesn't matter the order you do it, let's do the things that get the car dirty first and then wash the car. So insects, engine compartment, wheels and tires, and then I always machine polish the glass, and Pinnacle makes a great glass polish. And what happens on the glass is you get what's called road film and what I call a, a drizzle stains. And every time it rains and, the, and your car is parked and the water streams down the side glass, just the pollution in the air, the dirt on the car, it tends to leave uh, like a drizzle stain in the glass. And you can see this a lot of times when you wipe the glass with a glass cleaner. And that, that stain is impacted onto the glass. It's not going to come off when you wash the car. It's not going to come off when you use a glass cleaner. You need to mechanically polish it to get it all the way off. So engine, insects, wheels and tires, polish the glass. Hit the exhaust tips if they're chrome or stainless steel. And then wash the car starting at the top and work your way down. It'll save you a lot of time, your car will be cleaner, and you won't waste any steps. When it comes to cleaning wheels and tires, there's actually an order I like to do it in. First, don't ever work on hot rims. Make sure they're cool to the touch. Next, I take the Pinnacle Advanced Wheel Cleaner Concentrate and I like to go ahead and spray the barrels back behind the spokes and the face of the wheel and let it start going to work. And then, using my brushes, get in there and get them really clean and rinse them off. After that, I use the Pinnacle Advanced Tire Cleaner. Spray this onto the tires, scrub them really well. Sometimes you might need to do it twice to get them really clean if you got what they call tire browning or blooming. And then rinse the tires off. Now here's the tip. When you do the wheels first and then rinse the wheels and then do the tires, when you're rinsing the tires, you've got a second chance to come back and rinse the wheels again because as you're working on the tires, what's going to happen through gravity, the wheel cleaner that got into the, all the nooks and the crannies and say the lug nut barrels, is going to pool or drain downward and you'll have a second chance to rinse all that out. And that's the way I clean wheels and tires with Pinnacle products. Glass polishing. If your car is a daily driver, and for most of us, that's what we have, your car is exposed not only to the pollution in the air, but anytime it rains, the cars in front of you and they throw that water onto your car is full of oily dirt that's from all the cars that dripped oil as they drove down the road. It mixed with the rain, washes it on the car. So not only does it get on the body panels, it also gets on your glass. And it's not going to come off when you wash the car, and it's not going to come off if you use a glass cleaner. You need to mechanically remove that with a glass polish that's safe for glass. I use the Pinnacle Glass Polish, and I machine apply it, but you could also hand apply it. But this will cut through that film, it'll get it all the way off, and that'll restore that totally clean, clear glass that's easy to see through and also makes driving a lot safer. And I do this before I wash the car. You can do it after you wash the car, but here's the benefit if you do it before you wash the car. You can take and polish all the glass on your car, and if you get any of that splatter around the perimeter of the window frame, doesn't matter when you wash the car. Car, you wash it off at once. You save steps, you get a cleaner car in the end. Polishing glass is actually really easy. Take the Pinnacle Glassworks water spot remover, and if you want to use it by hand, apply it to a foam or a microfiber applicator pad, and then simply rub it onto the glass in a back and forth or overlapping circular motion. It doesn't really matter. And just, you really want to try to do is focus on the glass itself. And a lot of times, if you're looking, you'll see this film, this film peel off as you're rubbing it over the glass and that'll be your sign that you've got the film off in that area and to go ahead and move on. And you can do this to all the exterior glass. To use the Pinnacle Glassworks water spot remover by machine, use any orbital polisher with either a foam polishing pad or a foam cutting pad. Apply some product directly to the face of the pad, put the pad against the glass before you turn it on, and then just make overlapping passes. And you want to use like a medium to high speed. You need to maintain pad rotation in order for that foam pad and the polisher and the abrasives in that product to actually peel that road film off the glass. 
Then you can either wipe it off or just leave it there until it's time to wash the car and wash it off when you wash the car. You save steps, your glass will be perfectly clean. Washing the car is actually usually one of the funner parts of the process, at least it is for me. I like washing my own car. But when you look at a car finish and you see swirls, a lot of times those are accidentally introduced from the washing process. It's the thing that most of us do the most often. Okay, we wax our car once in a while, but we do tend to wash it a lot more often. And so I'm gonna share some tips and techniques to help you safely wash your car. First, you wanna use a high quality car wash, like the Pinnacle Body Works shampoo. It uses Tough Suds technology to help lubricate the surface and lift dirt off the finish instead of grinding into the paint while you're washing the car. Another thing you can do is use a foam gun. Now, foam guns make washing your car fun. In fact, if you got kids, they're gonna want to get involved too because they just want to plaster the car with foam. But what the foam does is it gives your car soap dwell time. It clings to the surface where the cleaners and the soap can go to work softening and emulsifying road grime and dirt to make washing even safer. Another thing you can do, or you should do, is always make sure you're using a clean wash mitt. If you have any doubts at all about your wash mitt, and it might have particulates in it, dispose of the wash mitt and get a fresh one. What I tell people all the time is it takes hours to buff out a car, I mean to compound and polish and wax it. It only takes seconds to put scratches into the paint, and that can happen with a tatty and worn wash mitt. So for the cost of a wash mitt, make sure your wash mitt is clean and new, and you'll avoid putting swirls and scratches in. When you do go to wash the car, the first thing you want to do is take your hose and spray off all the loose dirt. You know, just go ahead and wet the car down, remove anything loose, any sticks, any leaves around the windshield wipers, just get the loose stuff off. Then take your foam gun and plaster the roof and maybe the hood and the trunklet, the horizontal surfaces, knock those out first. If you're using a bucket, then just gather some soapy suds with your mitt and slather those all over. And here's an important tip that I'd like to share with everybody. When you're washing your car, don't scrub the paint. And what I mean by that is usually when you're using a quality soap and a clean wash mitt, all you really need to do is make a few passes over each body panel to loosen any dirt that's there and then it will rinse off. If you take your wash mitt and you rub it over the paint back and forth and back and forth or in circular motions, what you'll have done is you'll have loosened the dirt and now you're grinding it into the paint. So make it a practice to not scrub the paint, make a few passes and then rinse. After you've knocked out the horizontal surfaces, then tackle the side panels. Start at the top like of the fenders and the doors and work your way down. And at the very end, go ahead and hit the back area around the bumper and the front grill and the front bumper. If you follow these tips, you'll go a long way into getting your car clean without putting any swirls and scratch into it during the wash process. After you've washed the car, the next thing you want to do is you want to dry it. There's a couple of different ways to dry it, but one of the fastest and the simplest is to use what's called a Guzzler microfiber waffle weave towel. It's soft and gentle to the paint, absorbs tons of water, and you can wash it and reuse it over and over again. Besides using a guzzler waffle weed to dry your car, there's other options too. For one, you can use a blower. There's a lot of blowers on the market that'll blow the water off the car, and these come in really handy to blow the water out of the nooks and crannies and things like emblems and fins and louvers on the car. And that way later, when you're compounding and polishing the car, you don't have endless streams of water dripping down the side of the car because you didn't get it blown out. There's also the old school method, and I know some of you guys will disagree with me, we just get in the car and blast it down the road. Uh, as long as it's a clean, dry day, nothing's really gonna get on the car that's gonna matter. And what I like about doing this is it slings all the water out of the wheels and tires, so when I pull it into my garage, it's not sitting there dripping, making a puddle around the car. So there's all different ways to dry the car. Find something that works for you. I kind of use a combination of all three of those. The Pinnacle line is so vast, there are even three different products to get your car clean when you don't have access to a hose, running water, and a bucket. 
You know, in my opinion, the safest way to wash a car is with the old hose and bucket method where you're just flushing the car with water. But when you don't have that opportunity, for example, maybe it's the middle of winter, maybe you live in a condo or an apartment, or you're living in drought conditions or government restrictions, and you simply don't have access to a hose and bucket. Here are three alternatives that are safe to get your car clean. The one thing all three of these have in common is if you look behind them, you'll see I have stacks of microfiber towels. And that's how you get a car clean without running water. You don't try to do it with one or two towels. You have at least a dozen towels clean, inspected, and ready to go. So let me walk through and tell you how to use each one of these products because they're all just a little bit unique and different. The first product is the Pinnacle Liquid Gloss Rinseless Wash. Now, the way this product works is you go ahead and you mix up a bucket of say two to four gallons, you add two to four ounces of the product, and this is your wash solution. Now, the way I like to use it is I go ahead and I take a whole stack of clean towels and dunk them right into the bucket. And now, here's how you use the product. You First, you draw one towel out, wring out most of the water so it's not dripping completely, but it's still very wet, and start at the roof and work your way down. Use one towel, wash the roof, have a dirty bucket ready to go, Throw that towel in the bucket because you're done using it. Any dirt gathered onto that towel is never going to touch any other part of the car because you're getting rid of it and you're going back to the bucket, getting another clean, fresh towel to wash the hood, then wash the trunk. And each time you use the towel for one of these major body panels, go ahead and put it in your dirty towel bucket and then start over again with a clean towel. By swapping out to a fresh, clean towel, you're always introducing clean wash media to the surface. And the Pinnacle Liquid Gloss Rinseless Wash is a concentrate. So a quart of this is gonna last you a long time. It's high lubricity, perfect for cleaning road grime off and just common dirt that's on your car. You're gonna love this product, especially when you don't have access to a hose and running water. The next product in the Pinnacle line is the Pinnacle Liquid Crystal Waterless Wash. Now, here's how this product is just a little bit different than the rinseless wash. Instead of mixing this up with a couple gallons of water in a bucket, you just take and spray this onto the car like a spray detailer. Only when you're using this to get a car clean that's dirty, you want to lay down a, what I call a heavy or wet application. That means lay down a lot of product, okay? And what's going to happen is not only do you have the liquid softening and loosening the dirt and the road grime, but the cleaners in there are going to work emulsifying the road grime and the dirt so it's safer to wipe it off. And that's how you use a rinseless wash. I'm a huge fan of rinseless washes, especially for classic and antique cars, because as a professional practice, I don't wash them with the hose because that introduces Reduces water into places that could cause rust after someone's restored their car. So my favorite for classics is the Pinnacle waterless wash. And then here's a third way. This is the Crystal Mist Spray Detailer. Now this is a product you should keep behind the seat or in the back of the car someplace for an emergency like a bird dropping. But also say you're at a car show or you're traveling and you just want to get that car clean, you can just take and spray this on and use it kind of like a waterless wash and that you put a lot of product down. And then again, have plenty of clean towels. And uh, if you go through enough towels of the car, you're going to get your car clean and avoid putting any swirls or scratches in. The way you want to do this is go ahead and just put this on the spray setting. It has a spray and a stream. You want the spray. That's going to help to atomize the product to spread it out over a greater area. And if the car is lightly dirty, just put down a mist. Technically, a spray detailer is to remove fingerprints, light dust, and smudges. But if you're trying to get the car clean, then as you see me do here, go ahead and lay down a fairly wet amount of product. You want to be able to see the product, but not actually see it start to drain off the car. You don't want this on the ground going on in the car. Then take your towel like this and start in the middle and make one wipe with the leading edge of your towel. And all the dirt is going to be right here on the leading edge. Then make a second wipe like this. Pick it up so all that product and all the dirt that is being loosened by it is going into the middle of the towel right here. And then if you want to, you could even get a third wipe, just like that. And all the dirt and the product are right there. Now you can flip to the other side and continue moving around the car. Leading edge, the middle of the towel, the back of the towel. And then when you're all done, come back, 
with a fresh clean towel or fold to a dry side and just give it a little mist like that to polish it all off. And that's how you can clean your car safely when you don't have access to a hose and running water. After you've washed and dried the car, now it's time to inspect the finish. And this is where we're gonna diagnose the finish to see if there's anything wrong with it. And if there is, just the severity of what we have to work with. Now, you wanna do this in two different ways. You wanna feel the paint, and you're doing this to detect if there's any above surface bonded contaminants. Things like overspray paint that drifts in the air and lands on the car, industrial fallout and pollution, even tree sap mist. Some of these things, when they land on the paint, if they're not removed quick enough, they'll actually form such a strong bond of the paint that they won't wash off. And that's where detailing clay comes into play. After we inspect it with our sense of touch, then we'll inspect it with a good, strong handheld light, a swirl finder light. And we're inspecting for swirls, scratches, water spots, and oxidation. And that'll tell us whether we're gonna need to compound, polish, or if we can just get away with the wax. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my clean hand and not my ring hand, and I just wanna take and draw it across the paint. And to my skin, I don't feel anything, it feels smooth. So here's a little tip and a little trick detailers use. This is called the baggy test. Take a clean sandwich baggie and just lightly feel the paint and draw your hand very lightly. And a lot of times that thin layer of plastic will heighten your sensitivity and you can feel contaminants that your skin simply cannot detect. So as I feel this with my hand, I don't feel anything. But with the baggy test, I can tell I need to clay the paint. So here's how you use detailing clay. Usually the clay, when it's brand new, it comes in what looks like a little bar of soap. I've already pulled this out of the package and started to knead it. And a lot of times what I like to do is I kind of like to warm it up by twisting it like taffy, just to kind of get it warmed up. And then I'll take and I'll form it into a patty, like a pancake. And you want to do this about make this about the size that'll fit across your hand, usually four or five inches. And what that does is gives you a pretty good size footprint so you can get the car clay quickly, then you can move on to the next step. So I just do this with my, my fingers and my thumb. And then once I got this kneaded into something that looks like a breakfast pancake, now I'm ready to clay with it. And then the pinnacle clay lube, Shake before you use, and then just take and spray this down on the paint. And you want to make sure you use ample lube. This is going to lubricate the surface as you move the clay or glide the clay over it. And have a clean towel ready to go to wipe off the, the lubricant. So I'm going to take and put the clay in my palm, and then just come down here and rub this back and forth. And right now as I'm rubbing, I can actually feel the clay kind of grab. And what that's telling me is it's grabbing those contaminants and it's pulling them off and trapping them onto the clay. And when I feel it start to glide effortlessly, that's a sign to me that the contaminants have been removed. I can wipe this residue off and it's time to move on to a new section of the paint. And keep this in mind. Most of the contaminants will be on the horizontal or the flat surfaces, but some of the contaminants will be on the vertical sides. For example, if there's overspray paint in the air, paint is sticky and the wind can blow it to the side of your car. So you should inspect every panel on the car just to make sure there's no hidden contaminants that you miss. And this is important because the, the bond these contaminants can have in the paint can be so strong that buffing with a foam pad simply won't remove them. You have to mechanically remove them with something like detailing clay. And once you've removed them, well then you're ready to go to the next step and that's to visually inspect the paint. So to do this, I've got a swirl finder light here, and all I want to do is I just want to take and hold this about a foot and a half off the paint so the light's reflecting back into my eyes. Now, if you don't have a swirl finder light, you can use bright overhead sunlight. Of course, this would require a sunny day, and doing it sometime between, say, 11 and 1. I'm just going to bring this down and turn it on. 
just kind of draw it back and forth, inspect the paint. And the good news is this Corvette really doesn't have too many swirls or scratches, there's even water spots. There's a few here and there, but in my opinion, it's not that bad. That's because this is probably a garage kept Corvette properly taken care of most of the time. But anyway, that's how I would inspect the paint after I've washed it and dried it. I would use my sense of touch, and then I'd use my eyes in good strong light and look for contaminants and look for swirls and scratches. And it's this inspection that's going to tell you what you're going to need to do for the next steps, depending on what your expectations are for a quality finish for your car. The finish on this Red Vet already looks fabulous. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to take this finish and make it look like that car. Now, the Pinnacle line has a very exhaustive range of products for restoring the finish on your car. Everything from very simple paint cleaners all the way to advanced compounds, and then multiple ways to seal it. So I'm gonna run through the different products in the line. I'll explain how they work, when you would use them, and then we'll talk about the sealing products. The first product I'm gonna talk about is the Pinnacle Paintwork Cleansing Lotion. Now, technically, this is a paint cleaner. Paint cleaners are not abrasive. They're chemical cleaning only. They're really only for cars in excellent or new condition, and they're for just light cleaning of the surface before you apply the wax. For example, removing light surface impurities, light oxidation, maybe any kind of uh, previously applied gloss enhancing agents from the car wash or a spray detailer. They really just lightly or topically clean the surface so there's nothing on the paint before you put the wax on. You can apply these by hand or by machine. But again, they're for very light cleaning. There's no abrasives, so they won't remove swirls and scratches. Your finish really needs to be in good shape, and it's just a maintenance type product for most people. Now, if you don't need a light cleaner like that, then there's a complete line of compounds, polishes, and fine cut polishes. So the first product in that line is the Pinnacle Advanced Compound. This is a true professional grade compound. It uses the best in abrasive technology. And if you've got a car with serious defects like deep swirls, deep water spots, oxidation and scratches, this compound not only will remove these types of deep defects, but it'll finish out and look like you just polished it. It is an amazing compound. I use it a lot on the show cars I detail. After the compound, usually you need to use a less aggressive product to kind of refine the results to make it perfect. In the Pinnacle line, we got the Pinnacle Swirl Remover and the Pinnacle Finishing Polish. And these can be used by themselves for cars that aren't in too bad a shape or as a follow-up polish to the compound. And uh, all three of these products use amazing abrasive technology. They can be used with any orbital polisher. They can be used with the rotary. And of course, they can also be used by hand. In the first part of this video, I told you I was going to show you how to make this fast and easy and also fun. Now, the traditional method of polishing out a car includes using a compound and a polish. Then later, you got to put some kind of wax or sealant over that because compounds and polishes don't actually provide any protection. They just remove defects and maximize the gloss and clarity of the paint. So if you were to compound and polish and wax your car, that's a three-step process. Nothing wrong with that. It's gonna take you most of the day. Your car's gonna look great. But I wanna show you the fast, easy way to knock out your car and get pretty much the same results. And it comes down to the pinnacle jeweling wax. Now, jeweling wax is a term that means it's gonna polish that paint to a super high gloss, kinda of like a jewel. And it's gonna do this because it's gonna do three things in one step. It's gonna compound, it's gonna polish, and it's also gonna protect. So it's gonna do the process of a three-step system in one step to your car. And it can do this a couple of different ways. One, like the compounds and polishes, it uses amazing abrasive technology. I mean, look at the color of the car I'm getting ready to work on. This is black. Everybody says it's the hardest color to work on. This makes it easy. If it'll fix black, it'll fix anything. And the, the trick to using a jeweling wax, though, is to try to stick with foam pads 
orbital polishers, and then a technique tip I share with everybody is you use this product just like you'd use a compounder polish. And I wanna kinda of just explain that. A lot of times when you hear people talk about applying a coat of wax, they would say, apply a thin coat. Well, that's true after you've compounded and polished, because now all you need is a thin coat. But when you're using a cleaner wax, or this jeweling wax, where the abrasives and the polish and the wax are all working together, you need to use the product what I call heavy or wet, or use it just like a compound or polish. So I'm gonna put an ample amount of product on the face of the pad, I'm gonna bring it over here, I'm gonna buff a section, and I'm gonna make six to eight section passes. That's how I would use a compound or polish. I'm not just gonna pass that buffer over and call it good. I need to work the abrasives that are in this product over the paint to remove those swirls and scratches, and then of course, after I let it dry, it'll leave the wax protection. Now, anytime you're using an orbital polisher, you wanna work a section of paint about the size of a microfiber towel. This microfiber towel is 16 inches by 16 inches square, and that's about as big an area as you wanna work. So if I started out right here, after I buff this area, then I could buff this area, then this area. So this part of the hood, I would divide up into three sections, and I would continue that idea or that pattern around the rest of the car, only working small sections of a paint at a time. Okay, so let me go ahead and demonstrate how I would tackle this one section right here. Now, if you notice, I've got an emblem here, supercharged. I've also got some decorative carbon fiber. And normally, if you're new to machine polishing, you wanna take some masking tape, like this painter's tape, and tape that off. And it's just a precaution so you don't accidentally run the polisher over that and get any compound polish or a jeweling wax onto that surface. I've done this a few times, so I'm just gonna go ahead and demonstrate the technique. But you can uh, make your own decision with your own car whether you should be taping off any delicate surfaces like that. Anytime you're using a compound, a polish, a wax, or a Julian wax, always shake first before using. And then I'm just gonna go and apply some product right here to the surface of this pad. And that's how much product I would use to work a section. Again, unlike a finishing or a non-cleaning wax, you wanna use plenty of product. The reason why is you want plenty of abrasives and lubricating oils on the surface working for you to remove the swirls and scratches. Here's another little technique tip. Never turn the polisher on until that pad is in contact with the paint. If you do, that product's gonna go flying everywhere and then you're gonna stop and clean it up. Other, another technique tip is start at a low speed to spread your product out, then after you have it spread out, go ahead and bring your speed up. After making six to eight section passes, then you wanna let that jeweling wax dry. Remember, this isn't a compound and a polish. With a compound and a polish, you wanna wipe those off immediately. With this product, we actually wanna let it dry because it's got a wax in it, and that does two things. It allows the wax to bond to the paint, and wiping off a wax when it's dry is actually easier than wiping it off when it's wet. Now, one of the things I want you to uh, notice that when I was moving that polish over the surface, I was making a crosshash pattern. So I started going, uh, front to back, and then I went side to side. Each time I go over that section one time, that's called one section pass. I do it again, that's two section passes. And normally, if you're trying to remove swirls and scratches with a compound of polish or a jeweling wax, you need to make six to eight section passes for each area that you buff out to adequately or thoroughly remove the swirls and scratches. And then, of course, 
Uh, if I was doing this entire car, I would go ahead and just move on to the next step. And then periodically, once in a while, either clean your pad or switch to another clean dry pad. To clean these, you can just take a nylon brush and just run it over the front. And what that's going to do is it's going to remove any of the uh, wax that's kind of been left over. It's called, I call it spent product. And also, anytime you're abrading the surface, you know, you're taking off a little microscopic amount of paint. And that all tends to build up on the surface of the pad. So you do want to clean that pad as you're working around your car. Now that the wax is dried, let me share a few tips and techniques for correctly removing a waxer quite frankly, a compound or a polish also. First, microfiber towels by their very nature are grabby. So you wanna take and you wanna look at it with your eyes and then you, and if you see anything, pick it out and then also fill it with your hand. And this is so important because it could take you all day to completely compound and polish and wax your car. You can do it a lot faster if you use the Julian wax. But if there's one contaminant in the face of your towel and you just spend all this time polishing that paint out and you rub that contaminant against the paint, you can put a scratch back in. Then after you've inspected the towel and it passes your inspection, I always like to show people how my thumb and my forefinger are a clamp. I clamp the edges, then I'm gonna lay my towel out flat, and then I'm gonna spread out my other three fingers. I'm still clamping, and now I've got a really good hold of the towel, and I'm gonna bring this down, and I'm just gonna make small, little overlapping circular motions like this. And when you do that, any product is easy to wipe off and here's why because you're only taking a small amount off at one time the towel is able to overcome the surface tension between the product and the paint when you try to take too big of a wipe at one time the surface tension between the product and the paint overcomes your ability to remove it with the towel and a lot of times when you do that you'll be wiping and your towel will stick here and your hand will go this way. And that's a sign you're trying to take too much product off at one time. So make it easy on yourself and plus you're more gentle to the paint. And clear coats by their very nature are scratch sensitive. So anytime you're working on them, including washing, drying, polishing, wiping anything off, you always want to try to use the highest quality products you can obtain, inspect them and make sure everything is soft and gentle to the paint. And one thing about the Julian Wax that I know you're going to love is when you let it dry, and that's important, it wipes off so easy. And uh, I tell you, that's, you know, nobody likes a product that wipes off hard. And then, if you want to inspect your results, you could pull the car back out and look in the sun. Or if you got a swirl finder light, just come down and look at it and boom, that looks amazing. Now, if I can do this on black paint, you can do it on your car. Um, but even though we've just finished this with the Julian Wax, Pinnacle also makes a vast array of other waxes. I call them show car waxes. They don't have cleaners in them. And I'm gonna share a little bit more about those and then that'll help you to make a choice on which wax is right for you and your car and your needs. Once you get your car to the point where you see I've got this vet right now, and you're pretty much done, I want to share some products from the Pinnacle line to add those finishing touches, to finish the car off. And after I go over those products, I'll share with you the rest of the Pinnacle waxes and a few tips and techniques along the way. Besides making the paint look good, and we've already done covered interior detailing, let's talk about the tires. Now, in the Pinnacle line, there's two different products. There's a gel and there's a spray-on. They both work great. I'm going to show you how to use the spray-on, the Pinnacle Black Onyx Tire Spray. And a tip for using this, instead of spraying onto the tire, where it could drizzle onto the wheel or adjacent panels, go ahead and spray it right into your applicator pad. In fact, put the nozzle right into your tire swipe or a microfiber applicator pad and inject that pad and then use that to apply and massage into the tire. Use a black tire and wheel towel to wipe off any excess and then you'll avoid the whole problem with tire sling. And remember, we polished the glass when we were outside washing the car. So we've removed all the road film, all the drizzle stains. We've got that glass perfectly clean. So now's the time to put the pinnacle glass coat 
glass sealant on. And what this is going to do, it's going to fill in all those microscopic pits and pores and seal that glass and create a hydrophobic surface. And what that's going to do is after about 30 miles an hour, water's just going to fly off. You probably won't even need your wipers. It's also going to keep your glass cleaner longer. And here's a quick, simple technique to apply this. Use a foam applicator pad, spread it out using an overlapping circular motion, allow it to dry, then simply wipe it off. That's all there is to do to finish sealing your glass. Now, so one of the other products we have here would be the Pinnacle Liquid Sovereign Spray Wax. This is a very nice product to use to maintain a finish after you've got it looking like this. So maybe a week or two goes by, you wash the car, you dry it, quickly mist some of this on, spread it around with the clean microfiber towel, take a second towel, and wipe off any excess. You can basically wax your car in about 10 or 15 minutes. This is the Pinnacle Crystal SiO2 sealant. Now, this uses high-tech silicon dioxide technology to create a super glassy look on your paint, but also create that hydrophobic surface that beads water. And what this does is, it does a couple things actually, besides creating that glassy look on the paint. It makes washing and drying faster, and if it rains, it causes a self-cleaning effect where the water hitting the car actually pulls the dirt off with it and runs off to the ground. So it actually keeps your car looking cleaner, longer, and it's a very long-lasting sealant. Then over here we've got the Pinnacle Liquid Sovereign. So this is a liquid carnauba wax, and this is actually a really nice wax if you want to machine apply wax. You can also use it by hand, but it makes machine applying very fast because you can simply pour this out onto the pad instead of trying to like scoop a paste wax out. So that's the Liquid Sovereign. Pinnacle also has two different paste wax. There's the Pinnacle Signature Series 2 and the Pinnacle Sovereign Paste Wax. Now, these both use 100% Brazilian Ivory Carnuba for a shimmering shine. This is famous on the show car circuit. It's perfect for red and black paint to give it that deep, wet appearance that everybody loves. And what's really cool about this product is you don't have to let it dry. Here's a technique tip to apply this product or the Signature Series 2. Take your applicator pad and basically just kind of spin it over the top of the wax while it's in the jar. This will help to melt it. It'll seep into the applicator pad and then take and apply that to the paint on your car. Use an overlapping circular motion and after you've covered a panel or the entire car, go ahead and immediately wipe it off. And when you're done with that, you're going to be like me. You're going to have a lot of dirty towels. And Pinnacle even has something for that. It's their microfiber detergent. It'll clean your microfiber towels while maintaining the performance of the microfiber to keep them soft and plush and removing things like the waxes and the polishes or the spray detailers. Something for everything in the Pinnacle line. For more information on any of the Pinnacle products, go to PinnacleWax.com or AutoGeek.com.